Hello, good morning. I hope you guys are doing well. Welcome back to another video. It is about 9.15 in the morning. I slept in today, which was swell for me. I'm just feeling really good, excited to vlog. I'm really excited for this video because I just had like a kind of a vision of like how I want to go, what we're gonna include. I just feel like we're gonna have a really good day today and I'm excited for the topic of today's video. So today I'm gonna to talk to you guys about how I'm able to mindfully, intuitively eat. I used to say intuitively eat, but I think mindful is a better word because I still eat for a goal, but I'm able to do it without tracking, if that makes sense, and being super calorie focused. I'm still eating a certain way for performance, to feel good, and to look a certain way. So I'm still intentional with what I eat, but just without being super, super calorie and macro focused. So I'm gonna share with you guys how I got to that point, how I do it, especially how I got back to that point after coming off from tracking, how I'm able to track on and off and still kind of have like a good headspace when it comes to food and stuff like that. So I'm really excited. I've really been enjoying these vlogs where we have like a topic that it's centered around. You know what I mean? I'm talking so much this morning right now, but I'm feeling like really energized for some reason. This was me yesterday morning too. I was like cracked out. I was so hyper when I woke up. So I'm gonna stop talking, but I'm not really. Okay, first activity of this vlog is we're gonna do more affirmations. I did this in a previous video and you guys loved it and I loved it because it was just empowering really it's been a game changer you guys saying my affirmations out loud then i wrote so many good ones the other day so i'm gonna go back and say that i release control anxieties overthinking and expectations i surrender and trust i trust my life path i trust that the divine acts with my best interest i trust that all is happening for the greater good what is meant for me will not miss me what is meant for me will not miss me i am in alignment with all that is meant for me i lean into the unknown with curiosity and excitement i am present and enjoy what is the universe has my back love surrounds me all the time everywhere i go i am in the frequency of love abundance and gratitude i deserve to love others and be loved unconditionally i love fearlessly i love my life i am thankful for my life i believe in myself i deserve my dream life i create my dream reality money flows easily to me all the time my heart space is open and is accepting of all that what is to come i love myself and i am proud to speak my authentic truth are you kidding me how empowering was that and i just want to say you guys like this is something that I've been really taking seriously. There should not be a single degrading adjective that comes out of your mouth after the phrase I am. And I'm serious. I'm stern when I say that. Anytime you say I am, the following adjective <laughs> better be something empowering as food. Okay. I'm so excited for absolutely nothing today. I'm sorry, but there are a few things more refreshing than watermelon in the summer in the morning. Tell me I'm wrong. I just got ready, kind of ish, just changed. And I'm going to walk into Main Street in my town. I'm going to get a new book because I finished the You Are a Badass, the book I was reading previously. I think I know which one I wanna get, but I always just like, like to go into the bookstore and see which one is there and what I resonate with, which one the universe wants me to read. But before I do that, I wanted to give you a little dosage of kind of how I attack my mindful eating, if you will, and how I approach it. That would have been a better, a less aggressive word. I don't know why I said attack, approach. So like I said, I like to identify with like mindful eating so the reason for that being is like i a i just think tracking is super super meticulous it's like not super efficient at all i'm also italian food's a really big thing in my family so especially when i'm with my family it's like mixture of cooking stuff and i just like it you can't really track that all the time also it's not always accurate like no matter how <laughs> precisely you weigh your food and track it there still is always room for error there's also way there's it's just not as black and white as that you know like there's so many other components 
components that go into like the thermic effect of food, how much of the nutrients that's actually getting absorbed in your gut and your digestion that's actually being utilized for energy. There's just like different things that I've come across during my research that like just because you ate 100 calories, that's what it said on the package, does not mean that your body is necessarily utilizing and processing all of those 100 calories. So just like at the end of the day, I think it's most accurate to just listen to your body and that your body knows best. Your urges, your cravings, your draws to certain foods that is you have those things for a reason if you're i mean considering you're eating natural whole foods you're on your water you're on your fiber all that good stuff i personally believe like those pulls to certain foods are because your body genuinely needs them like if i'm like really wanting almond butter for some reason like that to me is like a sign that i most likely have been lower on my fat intake the past couple of days or if i'm really craving fruit or some carbs like it's probably because i was low on my carbohydrates the past couple of days and it's like catching up to my body you know it's processing so that's kind of my approach with it and so then i guess how I do it is I mainly start with my protein essentially it's like I mentally take a tally of my protein but not necessarily of my calories of my carbs of my fats I rely on my body to tell me that again through my research the main satiating components the main satiating things that we can eat are protein fiber rich foods and water rich foods okay so protein we all pretty much know what that is you know things like meat fish edamame lentils then fiber rich sources are you know those are all of your fruits and vegetables your beans and things like that and then water rich foods are mostly like your vegetables like cucumbers celery watermelon that sort of thing and just water in general so as long as I keep those three pillars in check those are the things that I'm intentional with I make sure that I'm getting my protein in with three main meals and two smaller snacks I'm usually having about like anywhere from 20 to 40 grams of protein in each meal again I'm able to gauge that because I have tracked in the past so it gave me perspective on how much protein is is in each size of everything if you will and then usually around like 20 grams of protein per each snack so I eat anywhere between like consistently anywhere between 115 to 140 to 150 grams of protein daily and for reference I weigh 130 pounds right now and then also with my fiber I'm intentional with my fiber so I try to make sure that I'm getting in my fruits and vegetables wherever I can with every meal I try to at least have one piece of fruit every single day and at least vegetables and like hopefully every meal if not two out of the three meals I try to have a salad every day and water like I said I get my water in through like water rich foods like I said apples watermelon that sort of thing and then also I'm on my water I try to have about a gallon of water a day and then as terms of like the actual calories of how much I'm eating of everything else that's when I just rely to my on my hunger cues in my body like my body is gonna know how much I need to eat better than anything else it's so dependent on like your activity level your own digestion like you guys know I like to take a holistic approach to health and I just feel like our body is constantly working through things and sometimes it's not ready for more food and sometimes it does need more food okay so that's like the backbone of everything of kind of how I eat but then I'm gonna talk more so about like coming off of tracking and how I'm able to like intuitively and mindfully gauge how much to eat you know what I'm saying but we're gonna break up the rant so let's go to Main Street you guys it's now lunchtime I'm home and it is so freaking hot outside that I just don't a we don't have tuna so I can't make a tuna salad which is kind of like the only thing that sounds good to me right now I just don't want I just want something cold light and refreshing you know what I'm saying so I think that I'm gonna opt for a smoothie which usually I don't do that to make it a meal but I'm gonna show you what I do to doctor it up to make it a little bit heftier to make it more of a meal 
you could say. And then I'm gonna show you guys what books I got. Step one, get your protein of choice. I'm of course using the Teamy Blends Wellness Protein. This is in their chocolate flavor. I personally prefer the triple berry flavor for smoothies. Okay, I'm back and I put on a shirt. Whoa, and I use that term lightly because this literally is a rag. But spoiler alert, I am gonna go to the lake, I think, and I'm gonna take you guys with me. But so I was wearing a bathing suit top and I was like, mm. Maybe it's like not the time, you know what I mean? But so as I was saying, we have a protein of choice. Then I got this at Whole Foods, which I've talked about a few times on here. This is Superfood Creamer from Laird's, this brand. It's absolutely amazing. It's all natural ingredients. It's coconut milk, coconut sugar, all organic, inorganic, coconut oil, and then Aquaman, which is just like basically this like mineral compound that's trademarked, that's completely natural. It's just packed with like really, really good vitamins and minerals for you. I feel like I'm like cracked out on health when I add this in. Also, I think I'm gonna add in a little bit, not a full, serving but of this gut love also from timmy blends it's basically a pre and probiotic and then we're going to add a nanner unpopular opinion or popular opinion this is when the banana is the best i'm also going to add in some almond butter my obsession lately and i get the honey one from walmart frozen berries and some rice cauliflower this ingredient seems so random to people but i'm telling you this is what makes it thick Add some volume, add some vegetables to your smoothie, and it's fantastic. And then I just use water for my liquid. Ooh, -hoo -hoo! motion bullet. This is gonna revive me, I already know. Wait, wanna well, know what else I should add if I wanna be good? I'm gonna add some spinach. The more veggies, the better. She's beautiful. Let's do a taste test. Also, I've been cutting straight to the chase lately, you guys. We ain't got no time for glasses. This is literally what I've been doing. Mm-hmm. Ooh. Absolutely scrumptious. Divine. Lovely. Okay, so who's ready for a bookstore haul? Probably no one cares, but I'm really excited. I first had to get The Power of Now. So this one's all about just like gaining presence and just as like, he's amazing for reading about like your consciousness and expanding your consciousness. And then also, I don't know if you know who Alan Watts is, but he's like a really famous philosopher and it's literally called The Book, which is awesome. And this is all basically about what it really, what self really means and basically how the sense of separation between like self and everybody else is a myth. Like we are all one. And then this one is called The Healing Self by... Deepak Chopra, she's an MD, and it's a revolutionary new plan to supercharge your immunity and stay well for life. Basically, I think it's talking about your internal health, like your internal headspace, and then also like the health of your body, which is like completely right up my alley. It talks about like the placebo effect, the chronic dieter, and how like it's not necessarily your overeating that's the problem, it's like other internal like mental health situations. And now I kind of want to talk to you about like kind of my experience with tracking and how I came off of tracking. And so I have tracked like on and off in the past. If I want to have like a specific goal and I really want to be more aware of my nutrition, I will start to track. But so for me, like coming off of tracking, my hunger cues would always kind of be a little bit suppressed and I kind of would just be still calorie focused. I just wouldn't really pay attention to what I wanted to eat because I would still kind of keep a mental tally of what I've eaten for the day in the sense of calories. Now I still do keep like full transparency. I still do like keep a track of what I've eaten for the day, but it's not in terms of calories. It's in terms more so of balance between carbs, proteins, fats, fruits, vegetables, if that makes sense. So the more I got off of tracking the longer I've stopped tracking the more my like hunger cues have come back the more that I've been able to be just more simply more relaxed around food and not seeing it as numbers all the time and just seeing it more so as what they are if I don't know if that's gonna make sense but like to me there really is a difference between like yes keeping a tally of what you're eating in terms of like I had an apple today and then also I had this donut and then this piece of chicken as opposed to being like I probably had like 150 calories from that and then probably 300 calories from that and then like that probably was like 20 30 grams of carbs like I don't think of it that way I think this is a more like holistic approach and it's making sure that I'm getting a variety of foods in my diet and making sure I'm eating in a balanced way the biggest thing that helps me when it comes to mindful eating and, and like not feeling restricted or have being like anxious around food is just like knowing that literally no foods are bad you can't categorize good versus bad foods like all that is is that there's more foods that are more nutritionally dense and there's foods that's less nutritionally dense that's it everything in moderation is nothing is going to kill you what matters more is like your whole 
intake from like a week to week basis, not one piece of junk food or even like a day's worth of calories or whatever. What causes more of the issue is you flipping out because you had it. That's what let, tends you to then super hardcore restricting, which again causes your body to be in an alarm state or just on the other end of the spectrum, just completely starting to binge because you're like, well, screw it, I already cheated. And then you really end up going over your caloric intake. So it, I just think the biggest problem more so is how we react mentally to when we have less nutritionally dense foods than you just having the one ice cream cone, if that makes sense. So just try and like not to stress about it, like just let things flow. I know it sounds like, I feel like I sound so hippy dippy sometimes, but it's just like true. Like the body knows what it's doing and you need to trust yourself, you need to trust your body. Getting rid of that like lacking mindset around food or feeling like there's a scarcity factor, feeling like you can't have something, all of that stuff makes you want it more, makes you have a lot of anxious feelings around food, makes you feel like you are out of control when you are around that food. So just fully accepting everything. Ice cream is being the same to an apple, which is the same to a piece of chicken. The same, I mean, in terms of like allowance of eating it, it will make you want to genuinely choose foods that make you feel good unbiasedly. And like I said, sometimes it's the chicken, broccoli, and rice that makes you feel really good. And sometimes it's the freaking ice cream cone that makes you feel really good. But the end of the day is you removing that like really harsh comparison and categorical factor of it all makes you genuinely genuinely be able to make that decision from an unbiased standpoint, from a true standpoint of what your body genuinely needs. And you will find that the normal balance should be like we all want. A majority of it, your body will be craving those natural whole foods and about 10 to 20% of the time, your body will be craving some junk food, which is normal. And I personally feel like that's kind of where we all should be sitting for a balanced, healthy lifestyle when it comes to food. I hope this video was helpful for you in some way, just kind of getting some more insight on how I tackle mindful eating and whatnot and maybe helping you transition out of tracking macros if that's what you're wanting to do. But thank you guys so, so much for watching. As always, I'm sending you so much love and hopefully I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.